My name is Monica Valdez Lupi, and I'm the Managing Director for the Health Program at the Kresge Foundation. Today, we'll be sharing an overview of our team's strategies to provide a better understanding of our work and what we're focused on. But let's start with the question What does health mean to you? Here's what it means to a few of our partners it's about waking up every day with a sense of wholeness. It's about a state of entire well being, not just the absence of disease. It's influenced by the environments and conditions around oneself that affect overall well being. Health is about all the puzzle pieces coming together affordable housing, food, access to leave, safe walkable communities, and a true livable wage. It's about the ability to live to your fullest potential, both physically and spiritually. And it's about the ability to walk peacefully around your community. And this one's my favorite, health is everything. For us, and we're sure for so many of you, health is about much more than healthcare. Our health and well being are influenced by so many different factors, such as housing, education, economic stability, transportation, and other services, along with community contexts like civic participation and interaction with the criminal justice system. Our access to what we describe as social determinants of health is governed by the social determinants of equity and includes systems of power like structural racism, sexism, nativism, poverty, and ableism. These systems of power include decision-making structures, policies, practices, norms, and values. Our team at the Kresge Foundation is focused on building equity-focused systems of health that create opportunities for everyone to be as healthy as they can be. In our ideal future, people and communities are thriving and have the power to realize their vision of health and well-being. All sectors are working together for the benefit of everyone, especially low wealth income um, communities of color. And we benefit from a fully functioning democracy that includes and represents everyone. As you'll see, our team is focused on three areas, community driven solutions, community health ecosystems, and community investments for health equity. We're committed to addressing racial equity in our work and recognizing the challenges that many communities face in addressing structural racism. In addition to our com commitment to racial equity, there's one other constant that you'll see all across all of our aspects of work, and that's how we prioritize community. And we know that community can mean different things. So across all of these focus areas, we consider multiple and very nuanced types of community. For example, community is people, community is places, neighborhoods and cities, and communities at the intersections of people and place. We're grateful for the chance to share with you more information about each of these strategies and how we approach our work. And we hope that you find our time together valuable. To talk more about our community-driven solutions focus area, I'd like to introduce our senior program officer, Stacy Barbas. Stacy. Thank you, Monica. I'm really pleased to share some thoughts about our community-driven solutions strategy area. So at Kresge, we really work to champion community-led solutions, and we work to make sure that it's reflected in our grant making. Now, we have a recent shift in our health team strategy that's led to a new focus on community investment for health equity and community health ecosystems, which you'll hear about a little while later. But one thing that absolutely has not changed is our strong focus and commitment to supporting community-driven solutions. So it's our hope that people can be healthy and thriving and have the power and resources to realize their own vision for resilient and their own co cohesive communities. Uh, and we hope that the work that we support in this area expands access to quality, affordable, safe and healthy housing, equitable food systems, climate resilient cities and regions, and certainly safe neighborhoods. Now, we do have a few key principles that guide our grant making in this area. We believe that communities experiencing barriers to health 
have a much more sophisticated understanding of their challenges and the solutions to their challenges than outside experts. So community members are uniquely positioned to know what's needed, what's possible, and to lead the work. They're the experts in their neighborhoods. So we value that expertise and experience and the critical role that they play in their communities. We also know this work has to take into account the specific historic context of a place that's led to the current conditions and that the work works to address structural and systemic bar barriers. I mean, we continue to know that it's critical to center and support resident leadership to ensure that those who have typically and historically been left out of decision making, that they have the power, the infrastructure, the networks and the resources they need to weather crises, but really more importantly, to contribute to help creating uh, their own healthy communities. And we also know the importance of mobilizing communities and supporting that work. We think it's a little less critical to identify a specific or policy program objective but more important to support the mobilizing. Because once communities are organized, they have the ability to address multiple issues and policies with a very cohesive front. I mean, we've seen that a lot during COVID. So communities are increasingly organizing across a range of issues, especially as the movement towards equity has focused on historical marginalization. So what's important is supporting community leaders in building readiness to act on policy and structural changes. Um, we've also seen that once a solution comes from the community, it's more sustainable. So we know that community-led decision-making is not only crucial to health, but also to the sustainability of businesses and programs and services that support and sustain thriving neighborhoods. So what does that look like in terms of our grant making in this area? Well, we really try to listen to communities and what our partners have been telling us and to develop our grant making accordingly. So over the years, we've listened, heard from uh, communities about the ways they think and what a healthy community looks like to them. So taking what we've heard from residents and community-based organizations, we support efforts in this area related to equitable food systems by using the equitable food-oriented development framework, climate change, and addressing health equity through housing. So what's new in this area is that we're exploring a strategy to, strategy to support community safety as well. I mean, we know that communities and community-based organizations operate in an intersectional way. They don't operate in a vacuum or a focus on one issue. Um, that the work requires addressing a wide range of issues like hiring and workforce development, safety, uh, racial bias, structural inequities, and all of the other challenges that communities address every day. Um, and we also know that when fu while funding is absolutely critical, there's many other important roles philanthropy, philanthropy can play to support learning communities, like bringing together people to help gather, helping leverage other funding, and ways that we can offer ourselves as thought partners while respecting the practitioner's leadership and their priorities and their pace. Um, so really working together with our partners, we want to see expanded access to uh, equitable community participation and decision making, equitable community centered food policies, climate resi resilient policies and strategies, and certainly adoption of community led safety policies and programs. So I want to shift right now to share a concrete example of one of the organizations that we're working with that focuses on solutions with their community. Um, we're supporting this work through our equitable food-oriented development body of work. So Oakland Bloom, located in Oakland, California, is uh, working to shift the food service industry to one that's healthy, equitable, and accessible, accessible for traditionally marginalized communities. They do that by supporting poor and working class immigrant, refugee, and other chefs of color to start their own food businesses. So they operate a business training and incubator program. They have an open test kitchen. And really importantly, they work to develop cooperative food restaurant businesses and finance models that prioritize communities, people power, workers' rights, and pathways to ownership addressing the racial wealth gap. They also lead Oakland, the Oakland Chinatown Anti-Displacement Initiative, 
which not only provides opportunities to highlight the immigrant and refu refugee chefs, but it supports a grassroots campaign against targeted discrimination and displacement that longtime businesses are facing in, in Oakland's Chinatown. We, we think they're a great example of work that's led by local leaders. It addresses a range of issues, includes economic and culturally equitable practices to improve the health and, and conditions in their community. So I really hope this gives you a better sense of how we define community-driven solutions. And we certainly encourage you to learn more by visiting our website, signing up for our newsletter, where you can hear about latest news about our work, but mostly um, hear about new opportunities and, uh, and our funded partners. So now I'd like to introduce our program officer, Erica Brown, who will be talking more about our community health ecosystems focus area. Erica? Our ideal future, people are healthy, thriving, and have the power and resources to realize their vision for resilient and cohesive communities. In this future, we see that all sectors are collaborating across systems to support community-defined solutions. Because of the dire health impacts of COVID-19, climate change, and racial injustice have made clear that our public health system is deeply fractured, we know that fundamental change is needed. And we understand that communities must be supported in their capacity to reimagine systems of care. New forms of collaboration, accountability, and opportunity for and with communities must be created. The opportunity for us to contribute to these types of transformations is reflected in our community health ecosystems focus area. We believe that community health ecosystems are more than just the infrastructure required to ensure public health. For us, community health ecosystems include the environments, the people, relationships, practices, services, and opportunity that sustain safe and holistic systems of care. With this focus area, we wanna make explicit the critical contributions that communities, residents, youth, leaders, and organizations make every day to strengthen and sustain systems of care. Much like our ideal future, the goal of our community health ecosystems work is to help build local health ecosystems where communities are safe, engaged, served, and healthy. Our strategies to get there focus on three priorities. First is shifting community power and health institution accountability. Community engagement and participatory decision-making are necessary to strengthen community power and ensure that health institutions are accountable to the communities they serve. With this strategy, we wanna strengthen our relationship with local health departments, health systems, and hospitals. And we wanna establish partnerships with community-based organizations and power building groups to increase community participation and decision-making. Our support for equitable community-centered approaches to climate change, community safety, and racial inequities in health are key to this strategy. Now, second, is the opportunity to support resilient health workforce pipelines and health infrastructure. Through this strategy, we wanna support leadership development and institutional capacity building within health institutions because both are needed to sustain a diverse and resilient health workforce. By partnering with community-based training centers, workforce development organizations, academic and health service institutions, our intention is to invest community-focused health infrastructure and workforce pipelines that are diverse, inclusive, and resilient. The third strategy in this area is expanding community center health programs. We recognize that community-centered health programs also require that community-centered budgets, programs, and services are expanded across the entire health sector. Expanding community-centered health programs will also enable us to renew our focus on community access to culturally responsive trauma-informed healing and wellness. We understand that we too are accountable to the communities we serve and have a responsibility to demonstrate the value of community wisdom by creating equitable opportunities for community participation, influence, and decision-making in our work. Strengthening community health ecosystems requires us to leverage the full array of our organizational resources in service of the visions for well-being that communities have and have articulated. With these strategies, we believe that some things are possible. 
First is an increase in equitable resource allocations by public health and healthcare systems in BIPOC communities, expand the community access to local equity focused health programs and services, expanded access to health training and health careers in Black, Indigenous, and people of color communities, and also increased community centered health infrastructure investments are all possible through this work. Because the community health ecosystems is a new focus area for our team, as we move this work forward, we welcome the insights of our new and current partners to guide our learning and work. Now, one example of community partnership in this work is our partnership with Health Leads, which hosts the Vaccine Equity Cooperative. The Vaccine Equi Equity Cooperative is a group of partners that serve as the cross-cutting infrastructure supporting community-based organizations and workforces on the front lines of the COVID-19 vaccination effort. The cooperative's efforts have helped resource, center, and spread hyperlocal, community-driven approaches to vaccine outreach, COVID adherence, and other related issues. The cooperative is developing and supporting community-based information and messaging campaigns. For example, to increase access to vaccinations among new and expectant mothers in New York City, Health Leads and the CUNY Graduate School of Public Health and Health Policy partnered with maternal health providers and community members to co-design a video series featuring three new mothers sharing their COVID-19 vaccine stories. Another example from this work is mobilizing resources, including funding and seeding power to community-based organizations. The cooperative has helped the White House reach under-resourced communities as part of its at-home test distribution program, which enabled early access by community-based partners to the government test order site. Over 80,000 people clicked the Vaccine Equity Cooperative's link to order these tests. Sharing data, research, learnings, and best practices that centered community-based workforces is also key to their work. The Vaccine Equity Cooperative's online library of vetted toolkits, resources, and research has been visited by tens of thousands of individuals. Community-based organizations themselves have shared feedback about how the platform structure makes it easier to find tailored vaccine outreach resources. Thousands of local leaders join the cooperative's monthly webinars and town halls, which highlight best practices and learnings from community-based efforts. These efforts help strengthen the community-based public health workforce by making local bright spots more accessible and replicable by other local community-based organizations, community health workers, promotoras, and departments of public health. The Vaccine Equity Cooperative's recommendations for the equitable distribution of COVID-19 vaccines to children have played a significant role in shaping federal rollout plans and helping to ensure that they advance racial health equity and support and leverage the community-based messengers families trust when making decisions about vaccination. Next, I'd like to introduce our senior fellow, Chris Cable, who will be telling you more about our final focus area, community investment for health equity. Thank you, Erica. Hello, my name is Chris Cable. I'm a senior fellow with the Kresge Health Team. On behalf of the health team, I'm pleased to share our goals and strategies as they relate to our community investment for health equity focus area. Our overarching goal within this focus area is to reduce the racial wealth gap as a pathway towards achieving health equity. In order to reach this goal, we use our platform and position to engage with our partners and direct resources so that communities can address their health priorities. While it might seem uncommon for a health funder to focus on the racial wealth gap, we recognize how racist policies and practices in the financial and real estate sectors, which were implemented for generations, have created the vast inequities that we see today. By one estimate, the total racial wealth gap in the United States now exceeds $10 trillion. The average net worth of a white household is more than 10 times that of the average black household. These disparities are even starker in certain states and metro regions. The historic exclusion of black, indigenous, and other people of color from federally subsidized wealth creation opportunities for most of the 20th century contributes to many of the health inequities we see today. Families who must live paycheck to paycheck have fewer resources to invest in their child's education and development, stable housing, a healthy diet, and other upstream determinants of health. More recently, research has shown that census tracts that were redlined, 
that is where access to affordable finance was restricted based on race, experience higher rates of COVID-19 and are more vulnerable to the health effects of climate change. Within our community investment for health equity focus area, we're de dedicated to reversing these historic trends. We do this through grant making, investing, and organizing around three major strategies. First, establishing equitable capital pipelines and community investment ecosystems so that a range of community development efforts can access non-extractive financing. Second, by growing community capacity to access and use these mission-driven capital to meet a coherent set of shared investment priorities. And last, by supporting innovative community ownership models. This last point is probably worth expanding upon. A number of communities around the country are developing innovative models to reverse these historic trends by creating new avenues for Black, Indigenous, and other people of color to build assets and wealth. These models include, but not are restricted to, community investment trusts, community stewardship trusts, and other vehicles that enable low-income residents to establish ownership stakes in residential and commercial real estate. Ideally, such vehicles allow residents both to exercise some degree of control over how development happens in their neighborhoods, while also benefiting financially from appreciating land values. We also support more established uh, shared equity models like community land trusts. Through our grants, investments, and partnerships, we aim to improve access to non-extractive financing for enterprises launched by people of color, increase ownership of land and other assets in communities of color, increase community influence over local investment and development decisions, increase the capacity of food enterprises that are consistent with equitable food-oriented development principles, and increase the number and viability of worker-owned co-ops in communities of color. As one uh, example of our partnership in this area, I'd like to highlight one, um, our field partner, Inclusive Action for the City. Inclusive Action for the City was founded in East Los Angeles in 2008 as a laboratory for innovative community development initiatives. Inclusive Action led a successful community organizing effort to legalize street vending in Los Angeles in 2018, and is built on the success by securing capital to finance small businesses, provide a range of supports to entrepreneurs of color, and to lead community ownership of commercial real estate. Through this multi-pronged approach, Inclusive Action is helping to build wealth and create economic opportunities within communities that have historically been marginalized and excluded from such pathways. At this point, I'd like to turn it back to Monica to close out our presentation. Thank you, Stacy, Erica, and Chris. And thank you uh, for taking the time to learn more about our work, our strategies, and focus areas. We hope that this has been helpful in hearing how we're approaching our efforts with communities to build and strengthen equity-focused systems of health. As Stacy mentioned earlier, we hope that uh, you'll stay on top of the latest news and opportunities. And so we encourage you to visit our website and sign up for our newsletter and follow us on social media. Thank you.